Hi guys, Kyle here, an engineer from Vancouver, British Columbia, here to show you another OpenCV tutorial. Today we're going to be adding on to the functionality of our color tracking application. Since so many of you have found the previous tutorial useful, I thought I'd better share with you some extras that will make your projects just that much better. So what we'll be adding is a neat little click and drag function which will automatically calculate the minimum and maximum HSV values for our filter. And this will eliminate, for the most part, the need for the track bars in our application. Now before we jump into the code, I'd like to show you how we're able to calculate the minimum and maximum HSV values from a user-selected rectangle using nested for loops. Now many of you have probably used nested for loops before, but I feel that this particular example provides an excellent visualization of what's actually going on when you use them. So for a nested for loop, we're going to start with our outer loop, where we have our preset initial value i equals zero, and then we're going to iterate through this loop n times. We then add our inner nested loop, which is going to start from an initial value of j equals zero, and iterate through that loop m times. So let's add some numbers in there. Let's say n equals 20 and m equals 20, for simplicity. We start at the, the top, at, at the outer for loop. We start at i equals zero, and go through the first iteration. When we get to the inner nested loop, we're going to iterate through that 20 times, and then we get back up to the outer for loop for the next iteration, i equals 1, get to the middle for loop for another 20 iterations, back up to the top for 2, 3, 4, and so on. So yeah, for loops are a pretty you know, basic programming topic, but they're very useful in this situation because the user selects a region of n columns of pixels in the x direction and m rows of pixels in the y direction. You can then use nested for loops, as I've shown before, to iterate through and gather the HSV data at each pixel coordinate. So if we actually visualize this region as a grid of pixels and pull up our code snippet from before and run the code, it's quite easy to visualize how we're able to iterate through each pixel in this matrix. Now all that's left to do is to add code to the inner for loop, which will gather the HSV data from an OpenCV mat object at, at each pixel coordinate. So let's take a look at coordinate 2, 7, everybody's favorite poker hand. This, this pixel coordinate, along with all the other pixels in, in the matrix, contain an H, S, and V value. This means that this CV mat object is uh, an array of pixels which at each pixel coordinate contains an array of HSV values. So it's a, an array of arrays. Now it's also noteworthy to point out that since this CV mat object is in HSV format, the, the data contained at that pixel coordinate is in fact HSV values. If we had, for instance, a, a BGR frame, or blue, green, red, the, the, the values at each pixel coordinate would be the BGR values, not HSV. So we'll first work through getting the H value, and the code is going to look something like this. We have HSV frame, which is the CV mat object, and we call dot at. We pass in the pixel coordinates in this order and receive the HSV values in CV data type VEC3B, which is essentially just a three element array, and since it's essentially a three element array, where H is the first element, S is the second, and V is the third, we access the zero element to get the H value. And same for S as the one element, and V as the two element. But we're not done there. These HSV values are only for the pixel coordinate 2, 7, and we're iterating through all the pixel coordinates in the region. So instead of, let's say, H being a single integer value, we instead use a vector of integer values and call push back to keep adding and adding to the vector as we iterate through. So once the for loops have done iterating, we've then saved all the HSV values into three separate vectors. And the great thing about using vectors here is that we can use the built-in standard library functions min element and max element to get the minimum and maximum HSV values from each of these vectors. So I think that's about it for the theory part of this lesson. Let's jump into the code and start having some fun here. So I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2013 for this project, and as before, if you haven't installed and linked the libraries with your preferred IDE, you can follow my installation tutorial here, 
or you can stay and follow this tutorial as I'm going to use a bit of a quicker installation method using NuGet, which is built into Visual Studio 2013. So we're going to create a new project. Click on File, New Project. Be sure to select Win32 Console Application, and we'll name our project Auto Color Filter. Click OK. To the next window, uh, click Next, and be sure to select Console Application. We'll make an empty project, and we don't need SDL checks. Click Finish. Now head up to Tools and NuGet Package Manager and open the Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. And here you can actually browse the NuGet.org uh, site. Just up in the top right corner here, you can type in, if you just search for OpenCV, you'll find that the first entry is by a username it sees, and I know that's the group responsible for maintaining the official OpenCV GitHub page, so that's a better source than ever. So we can install this package. Click OK. And the OpenCV NuGet package will get installed directly onto the same directory as your auto color filter project. So there's no need to go into the properties and point Visual Studio to the source files and DLL files and all that. It, it's already downloaded directly into the same directory. So this so this uh, method will take up a little bit more disk space if you're you know downloading the, the library to each project directory, but it is quite quick. So that's why we're using it here. So next, navigate to below the video that you're watching right now. This is just an example. Uh, right click and save as. It links right to the source file on my GitHub page. Uh, then navigate to the project directory. Mine is at Documents, Visual Studio 2013, Projects, uh, then Auto Color Filter. And go in one more directory and we'll just save it right there. In your source file will we'll already be called Auto Color Filter. .cpp. Navigate to the Solution Explorer where you can right click on Source Files and add Existing Item. And then it should be right in that same directory, so you just open that CPP and it'll be in your project. Now you can go ahead and try and run the code. Uh, for some of you it'll work right off the bat, but uh, for me here I have a little artifact from the previous configuration that I had with OpenCV. It's looking for a library file that uh, essentially doesn't exist or is conflicting with another one. So we can get rid of that error by right clicking on our project and going to the properties and then heading to C, C++. There's going to be three things that we're going to get rid of here. Uh, and here we, under additional include directories, we're going to click edit and not inherit from project defaults. Click OK and head down to linker, general, and then additional library directories, same thing. Down to input and additional dependencies, edit, same thing, OK. Oh, and before I forget, there's one more thing you can add in. Go back into the properties. Uh, OpenCV tends to throw a lot of warnings with Visual, Visual Studio, so head to C, C++, and preprocessor. And if you enter in CRT secure no warnings right here, uh, it'll just suppress those warnings, so you won't get a huge output in your console. So I'm hoping most of this will cover a lot of the errors that some of you may face, but I'm sure that there still will be some to solve. Anyhow, let's look through the code. Scroll all the way down to the main function so we can get a high level idea of what's going on here and what I've added to the already existing code. First thing we'll notice is a mouse callback. So that is when the mouse is on the screen, this function, click and drag rectangle, is going to be called. And that's how we actually get the rectangle uh, clicked and dragged on the screen. The next one is after we've captured the frame and converted it to HSV, uh, I've added in this record HSV values function. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same. So if we scroll up and actually look at these two new functions, the mouse callback, really all it is, you can look, it, it's pretty decently commented. It's just some clever logic to make the, the, the rectangle appear as you're clicking and dragging and to make note of uh, where the user has clicked, dragged, and released the mouse. Now this 
record HSV values code, you're going to notice our nested for loop here that we learned about at the beginning of the tutorial. Uh, it's going to look very familiar to you. And right after the nested for loops, once we have all the HSV data gathered into the vectors, we can then use the standard library min element and max element functions to get our min and maximum HSV values. So that's really all there is to it. We can go ahead and press F5 and run the code. I have a prime opportunity here. My cat's sitting here with his green ball, so I can track this one. Uh, make sure that when you're clicking over the object, that you try to get just the object in your uh, your rectangle. If you drag it outside of the bounds, it might uh, get some of the carpet or whatever's in your background and make it not so good of a filter. So that's pretty much it for the presentation today. I hope you enjoyed adding an automatic color filter to your application. Uh, I strongly recommend that you mess around with the code, you know, break it, fix it again, uh, make your own projects, upload your projects to YouTube to show everybody. I know that there's a lot of interesting stuff that you guys are doing out there, and I'd love to see it. You can subscribe to this channel for more videos, as uh, next time we're going to be looking at face tracking.